Early teardowns of the Tesla 4680 battery reveal it's not that groundbreaking yet. Instead of a high nickel cathode and a silicon anode, Tesla's revolutionary 4680 battery uses the same old NCM811 compound and a graphite anode, as early tests show. It seems that the only real benefit at its current stage of development is the packaging process. Let's find out in this video. First up, what shortcomings does the first Tesla 4680 battery have? The current 4680 battery cells do not deliver on the promises made by Elon Musk on Tesla Battery Day 2020 when they were first revealed. At the time, Musk mentioned features like a high nickel cathode, silicon anode, and an ingenious packaging system for a fraction of the cost of 2170 batteries. It only touched one of these alleged characteristics. We already know that the 4680 battery packs that Tesla is now putting in its Model Y are only halfway to the stated goal of a 50% reduction in cost compared to conventional batteries. The bulk of the savings comes from packaging efficiencies of fitting them into much larger tubes, which improves volumetric density and requires fewer spot welds. The key process of dry coating the electrodes, which doesn't require toxic mixtures or baking, remains an unachievable goal for now. However, Tesla hopes to launch a pilot project this year. Additionally, independent analyses of the 4680 batteries show that Tesla still uses the ordinary nickel-manganese-cobalt 811 mixture for the cathodes and ordinary graphite anodes. Whether it's because of the price of the raw materials that go into making the batteries for performance electric vehicles, or simply a lack of technology or manufacturing equipment, the high nickel and silicon electrodes that bring real cost, range, and performance improvements are yet to come for Tesla vehicles equipped with the 4680 batteries. Even NIO, which is more advanced in the development and mass production of a 150 kilowatt hour high nickel battery, which is supposed to propel its top-of-the-line ET5 and ET7 versions of performance sedans to more than 620 miles on a charge, had to postpone their launch. Its battery maker, WeLion, was supposed to deliver the first mass production batch of 150 kilowatt hour high nickel semi-solid packs this month, but the launch of the top models ET5 and ET7, scheduled for, has been pushed back to 2023 because the technology still needs to be validated. In other news, Tesla gets a bounty of 4,680 battery suppliers for 2023 as it tries to shift production to the U.S. due to subsidies. Tesla is pausing plans to expand Giga Berlin battery production as Biden's Inflation Reduction Act subsidies require cells made in America. Three of Tesla's other 4,680 battery suppliers will also be set to ramp up production next year. Samsung is one of the rumored suppliers of Tesla's upcoming 4680 battery. According to Korean media, Samsung has started the testing phase of its cells and will put them into production in 2023. Coincidentally, that's when Tesla's first 4680 battery manufacturer Panasonic plans to have viable quantities to ship to Tesla as well. Additionally, LG plans to outpace Panasonic in the market with its own 4680 cylindrical cell next year. So this is shaping up to be a watershed moment for Tesla's battery supply. The electric Electric car maker's head of investor relations recently announced that, for the first time, Tesla will have access to all the power supplies it needs, from phosphate batteries for its cars electric or lead-acid batteries for its electric cars, whether it's phosphate batteries for its standard range vehicles or 4680 batteries for its other models. It is perhaps for expansion and diversification of the production capacities he was referring to. Despite this rosy outlook for battery supply, Tesla is currently looking at options for subsidizing EVs under the new Inflation Reduction Act that President Biden sells celebrated yesterday. This law will give buyers an incentive of $7,500 to purchase a new electric car and will be in effect until 2032. But to benefit from it, EV manufacturers must start meeting certain U.S. requirements. Critical battery materials, for example, cannot come from countries with which the United States has not signed a fair trade agreement, which rules out China, the world's biggest playing field. As a result, Tesla's Korean battery suppliers, Samsung and LG, are already reducing their reliance on China for materials to help Tesla qualify for subsidies. Additionally, preference will be given to EVs with US-made batteries, which has led to a number of new battery plant plans being rushed to be announced by most of the big names in the industry. Not only is Tesla actively exploring the construction of a lithium refining plant on the Gulf Coast, but it has also put plans to install battery manufacturing equipment at its Berlin Gigafactory on hold for reasons of American production. Currently, the Gigafactory in Berlin only manufactures Model Y cars with batteries shipped from elsewhere, but Elon Musk has plans to expand its production capacity by adding battery assembly. The Inflation Reduction Act subsidy is apparently too good of an opportunity to boost long-term sales to pass up, and so Tesla's production strategy may already be in the works to change, as the White House wanted. Next, in other news, Tesla offers subsidy to cut Model Y and Model 3 insurance price in China as it cracks down on expensive showrooms. Tesla has started slashing the price of a Model 3 or a Model Y in China for those who order insurance from its stores, a backhanded way to subsidize the cost of its cars. The company is also moving its flash 
flashy showrooms from city centers to cheaper suburbs, where it can also offer repair services. As Tesla's largest gigafactory in Shanghai comes back strong from the pandemic restrictions in China with record Model 3 and Model Y production, Tesla has taken the lead in a move that some say could be a sign harbinger of lower prices. Starting September 16th, it is offering Model Y or Model 3 buyers a subsidy of 8,000 RMB, which is equivalent to $1,140 if they also purchase insurance in the store. Last month, Tesla exported a record number of these two Chinese-made electric car models, and the waiting time to get them has drastically shortened to just a few weeks, while dealers are hinting that there are a small number of cars available for walk-in customers. This situation may have prompted Tesla to start offering the insurance subsidy, but the measure has upset owners who purchased their Model 3 or Model Y just days before the de facto price cut, regardless of its modest amount compared to the overall price of cars. As Giga Shanghai pulls out all the stops with record manufacturing and export quantities, daily life in China is still affected by the rolling lockdowns local governments are imposing on multi-million dollar cities with COVID-19 outbreaks. Tesla therefore concluded that high-profile showrooms in places like Beijing malls are nothing more than money pits and actually detract from the customer service experience. According to Yale Zhang, a consultant at Automotive Foresight in Shanghai, there is no need to open showrooms in expensive malls, especially when the repair business has become lucrative. It makes more sense to keep only one or two showrooms in the city center to maintain brand positioning, but to move others to the suburbs. With fewer people to watch or test Tesla cars placed in malls, exorbitant rents make less sense economically, and Tesla is reportedly looking to move its showrooms from malls to the suburbs. Elon Musk is working to drastically improve the experience for car buyers in China, as Tesla has faced many complaints about slow or inconsistent resolution of issues from customers there and is apparently taking steps to fix it. Wrapping it up, affordable $44,000 Xpeng G9 SUV and $26,000 government EV boost Tesla for value in China. Two relatively cheap but capable electric vehicles have just been launched in China as a harbinger of the era of affordable e-mobility. Compared to the Model Y, the Xpeng G9 starts from just $44,000, while a $26,000 EV from a state-owned automaker takes on the Model 3. As investors fret over its pricing strategy, Xpeng's stock plunged when it introduced its G9 premium electric SUV at $44,000, roughly the price of a base Model Y in China with less range on a load. Another cheap electric car launched by China's oldest automaker, in partnership with Huawei and CATL, costs just $26,000, a testament to the rise in the number of quality EV proposals that can tackle consumers head-on with Tesla cars. When it begins shipping in October, the G9 will be the first vehicle in China to support the 800-volt SIC platform, which can recharge the battery from 10 to 80 percent in 15 minutes from the highest trim levels. The base G9 offers 354 miles of range and still supports C3 fast charging speeds that do the same battery pump from 10 percent to 80 percent in 20 minutes on the growing 480 kilowatt charging network by Xpeng. For comparison, the Tesla Model 3, which costs over $40,000, offers a range of 345 miles on the same cycle. The state-owned automaker aims to increase production to 15,000 units per month by the end of the year, and with BYD's $31,000 seal, it could be another formidable model competitor in the value for money category. So that concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. See you the next time.